The Akashic Records is a, an etheric uh, language. It's a it's actual place as well as a modern day modality of healing and intuitive work. Uh, it has the imprint, the energetic imprint of all of your past lifetimes. And you have a personal book of life that's stored in the etheric field of the planet in the Akashic Records. And you can access this during your lifetime and it will give you a deeper knowing of who you are and why you're here. Many religions reference a posthumous life review upon entering the afterlife, where a book of life or similar notion is used to judge and weigh the merits of one's existence. Yet is the idea of an Akashic library a literal, physical place or a metaphorical myth used to explain a complex idea. It's been referred to as the Hall of Records, the Library of Light, the Mind of God, um, God's Remembrance. There's many ways that they are referred to. And they hold what we would call our past, present, and potential future. And it's because we are here in linear time in the third dimension, and we've agreed to this time-space continuum that says, well, there is a past, there is a present, and there's the future, but where these records reside, we could say, is really in the eternal now, in the present moment. And so there is no past, there is no future, there is only now. When I explain about the eighth dimension and the cash records, I used to explain it like if it were a library or kind of a Wikipedia where you can go and look for any information you want. But for the eighth dimension, when you realize that every dimension is just a perspective of reality, you will realize that the eighth dimension is not a place where you have to go to look for that information, but you have to become in order to see and feel that information. It would seem that accessing the Akashic Records is a more metaphysical process than merely reading words on a physical page. So how is human consciousness connected to the Akashic realm? If we think that we are a leaf or a flower in a tree, and because we are a leaf or a flower, we are trapped in the tree, is because we didn't understand that the flower and the leaf are the product of the tree. They are not something separate. They are trying to feed the tree. With every experience, with every breath, you are feeding the network. The Akashic Records is like this library where every book that haven't been written yet and every book that was written shares the information all the time. Though the insight one might gain from viewing their own Akashic records is a tempting prospect. Matthias de Stefano warns against this practice before one is spiritually prepared. So this is the difference between the people that is trying to get into the Akashic records to look for information and the people that is willing to transform itself. So. If you take the information from other universe, instead of creating your own universe, so you will be eating the fruit of that tree of life and your own reality will disappear and will be destroyed by the information that is not your vibration. That's why in the story, when Eve eats the apple, the whole story for them is destroyed because she was not building their own information. The only way you can download that information is not going there and look for it, but to be yourself, transform into the vibration of that information so you can download it. That's the good way of doing it. Don't go and look for the information, just put yourself in the level of that information so it could be downloaded to you. Accessing the records is not as simple as walking into a local library. Those familiar with the Akashic realm suggest one must first attain a deeper understanding for the spiritual and metaphysical process. However, spiritually minded individuals suggest that with the knowledge of the Akashic records and their chronicling of our past, present, and future comes a great tool for enriching one's life. 
there's literally no inaccuracy with the book because the book is not going to be telling a fictional story for you. The, the book is literally going to be your truest self. So if you connect into your records, if you connect into your book of life, it's like looking in the mirror. The mirror doesn't lie. And the interesting thing about this mirror is it's a mirror for the soul. And when you look into it, you're actually able to write. You're actually able to create, to heal, to clear yourself, to create a great life.